All right, folks, let's get into it. You asked for it, and here it is. This is a quick tutorial on how to get the full screen experience, the Xbox full screen experience on your device. Now, for this device, I'm using the Xbox, well, the non Xbox ROG Ally. This is the white one. And what you're seeing right now is my desktop inside my ROG Ally. For the purposes of making this easy, I'm plugging in a keyboard to it, uh, well, rather a mouse to make the whole thing a little easier so you can just follow along with the cursor. All of the steps will also be defined on the website. Go to GCP for the website if you're not watching it from GCP and you're watching it on YouTube. And you will also be able to see all this in the description. Now, this tutorial has some prerequisites. We're making some assumptions. First and foremost, I need you to have updated all your drivers and all your Windows updates to the latest, greatest version that you have, because this will require that you go a little further than that. So if you don't have everything up to, up to date, it will chances are take you longer. Also, understand that this software is beta. Well, release candidate, but it is not ready for prime time. It has not been released to the public. So there's a chance this could brick your device. Brick is a strong word because you can just reinstall Windows and you'll be back to normal, but understand that you could lose data. So one, try not to do this on your main machine. And two, if you are doing this on your main machine, you want to back it up first, okay? So the first steps we're going to take is, as you see, we are in the settings of our Windows machine and we're going to Windows Update and then going to Windows Insider Program because you need to be part of the Insider Program to get access to this. You just literally log in, go under Settings, hit Get Started, and it'll go through a bunch of spiel, as you see on your screen here. A lot of things you need to agree with. Basically, the TLDR here being, hey, this is beta software, so if you're gonna install it, understand that you may need to, so you may need to reinstall Windows in order to get everything back to normal. Now, as you see, as soon as I do that, we are now restarting. It's gonna take a little bit to restart, but once you're up and running, you then go right back into your, your settings page there, and you're gonna see that that now gives you a lot more options to do some editing and things like that, and well, do some updating rather. So at this point, it's all about the updates. Update, update, update. Keep hitting update until you no longer have any more updates to provide. Uh, by the way, you see the little smiley face because this 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 device was Mr. Boomstick Excel's device, and I'm not trying to give that to, to everybody. So, needless to say, as you can see here, uh, under the Insider Program, once you've been able to sign in, like we just did here, you can choose between different versions. We're choosing the release preview version, but you can also choose the dev version. Depending on which one you do, it will give you an older or a newer version of Windows to be able to do it. Both get you to the point you need to be. This time we're choosing release preview because the release preview is enough to get you to 25H2. The version you're looking for is 25H2. You can, you can check frequently either under system or under Windows uh, updater. When you go back to the Insider Hub, it'll tell you exactly what version you're on. The ideal spot is 25H2. But to get there, of course, you're gonna have to do some updating. This will take, some, take a while, as you see on your screen there. It will, it will scroll and scan and you'll update. And once the update's done, it will reboot. It will do it many times. So we're just gonna skip along past this part, but just understand you're gonna need to update, update, update all the way until it eventually says, no, there are no more updates available and you're on the latest and greatest. At that point, you should be on 25H2. You can check that. And then you're ready for step two. So let's 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 skip this along a little bit. By the way, as you see, there are some updates now, but one other part that is kind of important, when you sign up to the program and you see which version you have, you'll notice that there's another way 
right at the bottom that says stop getting preview updates. You want to check the unroll this device when the next version of Windows releases, because what happens is every time you update, you're getting closer and closer to the release version, right? So, Because as the systems are, as they are working on the newer versions of Windows, they will then bring that version you have closer and closer to release to gen pop, as it were, general release. If you check that button, once they hit general release with your device, your device will now be a general release device and it will get out of that program. So then you have a standard version. If you don't hit that button, it will then give you the next dev version, right? And now you start the cycle again and you're back to uh, unreleased code. Uh, I, I expect your purpose here is just to get this running on your machine. So it's my recommendation that after you get this up and running and you have and you have the, the dev mode or the, the, the dev channel or even the release preview channel running and you're getting your updates, go on back into Windows Updater and check it off so that you make sure that next time when the full release is available, you no longer get any, any beta software, right? So as you can see, after you do this a couple of times, what happens? It starts the install process. We're gonna let it go through the install process. Now, eventually, after all the updating, you will get to a level where, of course, now there are no updates available. As you can see in, in this build, you're at 2622 GE release. When you get there, if you're lucky, there will be a fourth bar right there that says full screen experience under the gaming. But we weren't so lucky. So here's where we do some interesting things. Um, you will see that there are, there's a tool we need to install and there are some commands we need to run. You log in as an administrator of a command prompt. If you don't know how to do that, the instructions on the website will give you a bit more detail. And then you just follow the commands. First, you need to get to the folder where you installed the Vive tool, which you don't even install it. You just download it and unzip it. From there, from within the Vive tool, there's a command you run. Uh, of course, I'll keep it easy here by copy pasting. I recommend you, you do this from uh, a notepad because notepad removes all formatting. And basically you paste it into the field and then hit, hit enter and it should finish installing. And when it finishes installing, of course, it'll let you know and you'll, you'll be able to, to get it running. Now, command prompt sometimes doesn't like copy paste. I still use control V and I got it installed there. You run the first command. It'll give you the same success as the second command. And with that, now it's time to do a quick check of the registry. Some folks you'll go, you'll do this You'll get to your destination and you'll realize that the thing you wanted were looking at was already there. It was there already in the first uh, first device that I I did this on. But on the second device, it wasn't there. So I had to actually put it there, which is fine. So in case you do this and you go to your destination and it's not there, then this is the instructions for you. If it is there, just verify that it's there. Maybe convert one to the other and then we'll, we'll, it, it will still work. But needless to say, let's get you there. Um, again, the full path is in the instructions, but basically what we're looking for is local machine, software, Microsoft, Windows NT, current version, and then Ohm. So let's follow that. All it is is the directory structure. So you start from the top and you just work your way down. As I said, the full path 
is both in the instructions on the website and in the description below under that like button, which you should be hitting because this is great instructions for you. <laughs> so needless to say, you go to Ohm and there it is. Now, when I went to Ohm on this device, it didn't have what I needed, so I had to place it there. And what did I have to place? I had to create a new D word, 32 bit value. I had to call it device form, which you see me putting in here now. And then once you have device form created and it has to be exactly like that with the, the capitals where they are and everything else. Once you've created device form, you then open device form up and then change the, 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 the value there to 46. Now, the thing about this is the decimal is 46, but the hexadecimal reads as 2E. So if you were to go back in, you now see that the decimal says 2E, but if you hit the, the well, the semi-decimal says 2E, if you hit the decimal, it says 46. In many instances, you go there and it'll already say that. If this is not working for you or something's weird, you can always just go right back in there. It says 2E, just change to, to, to decimal and type in 46. After that, you reboot the machine. It comes back up. You go under settings. And what do you see now? Under gaming, you will see the fourth option you're looking for, which is the full screen experience. Here's where the fun begins. You got to choose the home app. Obviously, the only option right now is the Xbox. I say right now because why is there a drop down? I think there might be other options later on, but that's just a theory from me. Needless to say, full screen experience, and it's also good to set the full screen experience at startup. That is what will get you access to the, the, the full screen experience without the desktop. And it's far more optimized when you do it that way. So when you do that, then the next thing will be putting it into full screen mode. On this device, the ROG Ally, there is no way of initiating uh, the Xbox guide button, you know, the big guide button. So I had to make that setting myself if, you, if, you, if you're on here. Uh, on any device, either it may have a button that, 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 that works as the Xbox button, or you're gonna have to map one. I mapped one of the back buttons and turned it into the Xbox button. If you use an ROG Ally, this is for you. If you're on an MSI Claw or a Legion Go or any other uh, any other Windows handheld, you might have a different process in how you do it. But needless to say, you just need the Xbox button on one of these button uh, settings. Once you have that, you can press the Xbox button and it'll head you to the game hub, which is exactly the game bar rather, which is exactly where you need to be. So you give it a little bit of uh, time and the, and the actual Xbox full screen experience will pop up. And as you see, you swipe up and there is your, your, uh, your, your task switcher. Now, um, because this is a new machine and this is Boomstick's machine, shout out to Mr. Boomstick. I also wanted to, you know, test it out, play with it a little bit. So I also uh, installed Steam on there, but of course I haven't configured Steam properly or anything like that but I did set Steam to big picture mode, which is always a, a good thing, a good recommendation to do here because you, otherwise you're gonna have to mess with a keyboard with it or, uh, or mouse rather with it. And we're not gonna do any of that, but at least you see, once you have it set up, you swipe up and you can switch between them. But there it is, the full screen experience. I hope it works for you. If you have any issues, let me know and happy gaming.